This vehicle's back, 1993 Eldorado. Um, I, I already did a video on checking and clearing codes on this car. It's got a bad AC compressor. Somebody replaced it and they probably put the wrong oil in the thing. Um, they didn't retrofit it properly. So I got to put a compressor in it. Um, this engine is, this AC compressor job is pretty much all the same for all front wheel drive. 4.1, 4.5, 4.9 liter engines from like 1982 to 1994, I think. I've, I've done a lot of work on these. I used to work for a used car Cadillac dealership when I was in my younger days. So, um, yeah, they call this like a high technology engine. It's a wet sleeve engine. It's kind of funky. I've taken these apart, replaced cams on a lot of the four ones. I've done all kinds of work to these, but... Yeah, so this is just kind of bringing me back. Um, I'm going to show you how to do one of these on these front wheel drive cars. Now with the exception of the belt, pretty much everything on this car you're going to have to get at from underneath. So uh, these are 10 millimeters. There's like an 8 millimeter right here. Oh, quarter inch. That's not supposed to be there. Somebody put that there. It's just a pull clip. There should be more stuff back behind here. Okay, I can just kind of pull this back out of the way a little bit. It's all busted up up here, so this is making my life easy. I'm going to take this inner fender off. There might be a skid plate on yours underneath the vehicle. I'm buried in the back of this. There's a uh, there's a 15 millimeter bolt for the for the high pressure line. Of course, you're going to want to drain the system. I got a swivel socket on here. You can sneak this thing out. It goes right in this way. Just like that. You can barely see the bolt from right here in a three foot extension. You can get in there, it'll happen. In the back of the compressor, see that? There's two bolts. Buried way the heck up here. Those two bolts right there, 13 millimeters. I got to get those out. So those are bolted onto the back of the the back of the compressor. I'll be getting at these from the front with my three foot extension and a 13 millimeter swivel socket. This one I cut down and I made a stubby out of it a long time ago for really tight to reach spots. You might not need to do that. Get a magnet after the thing so I can get it out of here. So this is the angle right here. They come in this way just like so. So that's how I get them out. I just thought I'd show you that. That was the best angle I could give you. I'm going to unplug this connector for this AC compressor clutch. I'm just going to get up here with a hook tool and try to get this out of here. And I got a 13 millimeter right here. I can get at that with my swivel socket and an extension too. Take the belt off, not next. A lot of times there's belt routing on GMs. They're nice enough to always put the belt routing somewhere. So you don't have to write it down or guess. Yeah, you just use a half inch. Pop this off. Yeah, now would be a good time to get that bolt out. This uh, 15 millimeter right here. I'm probably, no, it's a 13 millimeter. It's 13 millimeter. I'm going to take that bolt out so I can get that rod out. There, I took that out. That was easy. There's two 15 millimeters left. I'm going to get at these with this extension and swivel socket too. Now on these front wheel drive cars, these things come out one of two ways. Either I can just sneak it right out of here, and if that's not happening, then I got to unbolt this cradle in the front. I got to put a jack under the cradle, and there's a bolt on the corner right here, and um, possibly even the one on the other side in the front. And I gotta drop this whole cradle down because that'll give me a little more room to get this out. Some front wheel drive Cadillacs, you can get them out like this, and some you can't. It's just a really 
really tight fit. I think I'm going to get this one. Alright, that's all. I'm going to try to drain the oil out of here. See if anything comes out and see what it looks like. I put 8 ounces in here. And I put a new receiver dryer or accumulator in it. And um, just to see if this compressor would feel like actually working properly again, which it did not. In fact, it was low high pressure and um, there's a pressure relief valve on this piece of junk and it kept popping. And there was it wasn't even it wasn't even up to the right high side system pressures and the thing was blowing right out. So yeah. It smells funny. Uh, I got a T40 Torx on here. This one's recessed. That's actually got a thick washer on it. Ooh. Fun. So yeah, they give me a thick they this one takes a thick washer and this takes a thin one. And they gave me two thin ones, so I gotta go to the parts store and I gotta try to find a thick washer for this thing. But first I'm gonna try to see what I'm gonna see if there's any oil in here and I'm gonna drain out whatever's in here. Because I don't know what they put in here. There's nothing in here. Well that's grand. Alright, I'll put this back on for now. And go to the parts store and try to find uh the thick washers. This could have been a leak right here. This washer's all butchered. That seal? What the heck? And I go over here and I look on this. It looks like somebody tried to reef this thing on without lining up the holes. Look at that. Somebody probably just put that up there and tried to screw that sucker home and butch the heck out of this thing. Freaking hacks. Went to the parts store and got a ceiling washer. The other one that came with the system I'm going to use. Um, yeah, these are color coded too. You, if, if you took a red one out and you want to put a red one back in. The only thing I'm going to do before I put them back on the line is get a little bit of oil on these. I want to oil these up because they seal better when they when they're oiled and I'm just gonna stick them on the, the line this was retrofitted um, anytime you retrofit from R12 to 134a you always want to use ester oil because that's that is a real synthetic oil and it mixes with both oils so if, if you have mineral oil in there you got to get out as much as you possibly can People say clean the lines, you really should. I don't think these were. Because um, if you saw my last video, um, I took as much oil as I could out of there and it was the wrong color and it there was just there was just gooey chunks that came out of the thing. It actually if you if you use 134A and mineral oil, it actually turns it into alcohol and other substances. So I'm going to use ester for this and it's going to work just fine. Um, I'm going to call this a major leak because there was no refrigerant in it when it came back again. So I'm going to want to add three to four ounces of oil. So roughly about half of this bottle. It's an eight ounce system. I put eight ounces in it the last time it was here and it was damn near dry. So I think I only got like a couple ounces out of the whole thing so whatever oil was in there I don't know I tried to clean it out as best as I could too so I'm just gonna pour this down in in the compressor as much as I can get in here so I don't have to pump it into the line when I do an evac I'm gonna put this cap back on I'm gonna stick this thing in now for the fun part. I'm gonna get in the line and punch. That made my life a little easier. Now before I go tightening these down, I gotta get them two 13 millimeter bolts on the 
back of this thing put in first. Because if I just tighten these down, it's they're not going to line up. Well, hopefully I make this look easy. I got one of them bendy, twisty magnets I can hopefully get these up in here. Somehow. And uh, as for getting it started, uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. I can get my hand up in here. Almost. What a pain. Be nice if these bolts were self starters. I think I got it. Wow, this thing really crammed up in here. Got to pull this line out of the way and get professionally lucky. I got that thing started. You can go ahead and tighten these down. How to get this line back on? That yeah, looks like it's started in the holes. Well, if this isn't square, it's not going to go in, so you got to make sure it is. It's not going to like you. I had to lift up on this line quite a bit just to make sure it goes in right. Now I can break out my little swivelly socket. That feels right. I just want to get a good look at it. Make sure I didn't do what the last guy did and tighten it down all crooked. Yeah, it looks nice and square in there. Well, I can go ahead and tighten these down. I'm going to plug in this electrical connector too. Kind of try to find a way to put it so it doesn't get in the way of anything. Next up, the bar of funk. I can't think of a better name for this. Unlike the last guy that did this, I'm actually going to tighten this bolt. Belt Ola. Time to cover up the ugly. There. I'm going to try to fix this. Okay, I spent some time on this bumper and I got it all tied down right. I didn't show anybody how I did that because it, it just takes way too much technical skill. So, that's my story. I'm sticking with it. put this thing back on here somehow. It's missing some clips so I found one I can use kind of. And this requires a new self-drilling screw in a brand new hole. Betta! He said this thing fell out on him when he was on a trip somewhere. I can see why. They're all half stripped out and yeah, this isn't even a... Uh, wow, that's, that's like doing nothing. Wow, that's interesting. Wow, yeah, these don't... They're in there, but... Ooh, ooh, that one works. Ooh, ooh kind of, not really. Well, no wonder why the thing fell out on them on the freeway. See if I can drill this self-drilling screw through the frame. Wonderful. All right, now I got my million dollar evacuation apparatus. So uh, I just gotta make sure it doesn't hit anything stupid. And um, evac. working. Alright, I'll let this run for about 10 or 15 minutes. Should be all evac'd up. This thing's got a leak somewhere. I gotta look for a leak. <laughs> 